VLOOKUP is one of those game-changing functions that takes Excel from a spreadsheet that helps you organize to a productivity tool that actually works for you. How does it work, you ask? Let's look at a common scenario. These sales reps are paid commission based on their weekly sales totals. This data set has the lower limits for each commission percentage. The data set below tells us how much each rep actually sold. Our VLOOKUP formula can now do a V or vertical lookup by looking up each sales rep's figure in the commission chart, grabbing the associated commission percentage from the chart and placing it in these cells where we want them. Let's break down that VLOOKUP formula and how it works. It has four arguments, but only three are required. When we type equals VLOOKUP, we type an open parenthesis to let Excel know we're ready to start entering the arguments for this function. The great thing is that Excel helps us along by telling us what's next. Let's just make sure we know what each argument means. So, first argument, lookup value. That's just Excel asking us, what's the value you want me to search for? For this cell, it's going to be this value in cell C13. We type a comma to move on to the second argument which is the table array. Excel is asking, where's the source data that has the values you're looking for? So we select this entire array. Every time we want Excel to search for a commission percentage, it's going to be somewhere in this same array. But we don't want to have to type this formula in one by one for every row below this one. And if we just copy it down, the cell references are going to shift by one cell each time, making the table array range wrong. So we make this range absolute by placing dollar signs before our cell references for the table array. This is like anchoring them so they don't move when they get copied. We type a dollar sign before the column and row numbers that begin and end our range. Now we're ready for our next argument, so we type a comma. Excel asks, what's the column index number? This means if the first column in your table array is column number one. What column number do you want your results to come from? For us, it's column two. So we type the number two as our column index number. Then comes this argument in square brackets. The square brackets mean this argument is optional, and the name of that argument is range lookup, which is kind of unfortunate because that name isn't very descriptive or helpful in telling us what it does. But since it's optional, here's what we need to know. VLOOKUP assumes that you'll accept an approximate match if an exact match can't be found. That's the default. So if it doesn't find the exact match in the table array, it'll give you the closest or approximate match that's less than the value you search for and send you that result. That's the default. So if you type nothing after your column index number, that's what you'll get. No optional argument required. And as you can see, the lookup values in your source data would have to be sorted from smallest to largest for VLOOKUP to work with an approximate match. That way, once Excel gets to a number that's larger than the lookup value, it'll stop searching, and it will use the previous row to give you a result. So we end our formula by closing our parentheses and hit Enter. And we have the commission percentage for our first employee. Let's copy. And now we have everyone's commission percentage posted. Knowing that VLOOKUP assumes an approximate match by default when it doesn't find our lookup value, if you need an exact match, you're going to want to say to VLOOKUP, your assumption is false. And we'd type the word false as the last argument of this formula. Like for this column, we know the ID numbers of the reps who got these commission percentages, but we don't know their names. Over here, we do have their ID numbers and names, so we can just use VLOOKUP to pull that information down here. In this situation, obviously, an approximate match to the ID numbers won't work, so we'll definitely need that false typed in at the end of our formula. So here we go, equals, and we notice when we type VL, Excel suggests the function name VLOOKUP. To accept that, we can just hit tab, and it'll type the entire word in and the first parenthesis. Our lookup value will be the ID number in cell A14. We type our comma 
and the array is the data set that has the information we're looking for. Now the value we're searching with must be the first column of our table array. So even though this data set starts with column F, the lookup values are located in column G. That has to be the first column of our lookup array. So it starts here at G5 and goes all the way here to I10. We can make this range absolute by just hitting F4 on a Windows keyboard or Control T on a Mac. We type a comma and the information we want copied into our blank cell is located in column index three, the third column in our table array. So we type the number three. And of course, we remember to type our comma because we'll need that optional argument, false, to let Excel know that an approximate match won't do in this case. We close parentheses and hit enter. We've got our first employee name. Copy down to populate to the remaining rows, but we've got an error message here. In cell B17, it says this value isn't available. Of course, it's referring to the lookup value in cell A17. This is an alert to tell us that this ID number wasn't found in our source data set. So we either typed it in wrong or an employee ID number needs to be added to our source data. Well, we realize that this should be employee 6054. We adjust it and the employee name is updated. So our takeaways, first, your lookup values must be the first column of your table array, your source data. Second, VLOOKUP defaults to an approximate match. If that's what you want, type true as your fourth argument or just leave it blank. Third, the source data for approximate matches must be sorted in ascending order, smallest value to largest value. And finally, for an exact match, type false as your fourth argument. Now go have fun with this cool and time-saving function. Ready to learn more about Microsoft Excel? Then check out the full course on GoSkills.com. Click the link in the description.